They say London swings. It doesn't. Not even the King's Road, Chelsea. But here and there, among the conformist, fat cat crowds, is a lean cat or two, looking like it might swing, given some encouragement. And in among the chain stores and supermarkets is here and there a shop that may have something all its own to say to the character who can send up the mass production car, to people who can put living before a living. World's End means where the King's Road ends, which shows what the King's Roaders think of themselves. Granny takes a trip, the shop behind the face calls itself, and it's typical of the non-typical conforming to the non-conformist image of the inn. What they used to call way out, and before that with it, and before that groovy, and before that hep, and what Granny herself would have called the very latest thing, my dear. Maybe the toy cars are key, childhood, innocence at war with a hard adult world, the fun of dressing up. Hung on you, meaning both we sell clothes and we love you, which is good shopkeeping in any language. And the lollipop says what the toy car said. It's all another tiny colored womb, warm and gentle, in its way an escape from the H-bomb, television, and other horrors of the workaday world. King's Road that London is lumbered with stands, just, a collation known as the Antique Supermarket, and antiques can mean clothes. This lady's time machine is headed for the flapper world of the 20s, doubtless a trip many a time traveller would love to take. One way of saying no to authority is to parody it. Some of the young, with little to say yes to, come to Soho, that pulsating heart of swinging London where girls join clubs to see old men strip. Or is it vice versa? And at the cutely named I Was Lord Kitchener's Valley, buy uniforms of the past to affront the uniformity of the present. A street called Carnaby attracts those tourists who delight in the relics of Britain's past. Stonehenge, Brighton Pier, the House of Lords, but some natives are still seen, albeit heavily cloaked. Much of the gear reverts back to the kinky period in Britain's brave history, and for those who still thrill to the sight of purple lace-up boots, here are purple lace-up boots. In Carnaby Street, you can't tell the assistants from the customers. Anybody addressed as madam would probably sue for defamation of character. John Stephen, these are his shops, is the uncrowned king of Carnaby Street. Many of his business rivals would dearly like to see him crowned. The return of the dicky, for the man who can't afford a clean shirt but won't admit it. Ideal camouflage for the larger foot. A shop called Gear. And you're never too young for in gear, until you're old enough to say so anyway.
the meanwhile back at the ranch countdown kings road the tills click merrily on for all the strangeness these are clothes to be worn to be bought and sold these soft music loud caverns of the avant-garde can be misleading for they are the work cells of revolution once upon a time, just a year or two ago to be precise, fashion originated in the haute couture salons of Paris, then spread downward through society in ever cheapening copies with one predominant theme. Shops such as this would have interpreted the mode, but no more. Now they originate, and so do a dozen others in a dozen styles owing nothing to Paris or anyone else. So it is that the inn scene of London is one big fancy dress ball. Men come as cowboys, hussars, or refugees from St. Petersburg, 1917. It girls, oomph girls, who's for tennis girls, odalisks from the harems of bygone Turkey, mingle with kaftan slinkers from gay Arabia, and boa-bedecked hoydens from the lids of ancient chocolate boxes. A super charade of happy happenings. Though it might be fun if some designer somewhere thought something up entirely new. None of this, thank heaven, adds up to swinging London, but it makes a not unpleasing splash of colour in the old city. What gear the cats are wearing is one story, where they wear it is another. whether here at Tiles, or here at the Bag of Nails, or at Samantha's, or George's, or the Saddle Room, or any of the in-gaffs where they go, just don't take any of it too seriously, or you'll miss the whole point.